All right, that's day one of the Air Force Academy. I appreciate you uh, taking some time over the last 30 minutes to salute uh, the academies. We started with day one at West Point. We went to day one at the Naval Academy. We went in day one at the Air Force Academy. Um, It's so important that we understand the freedoms that we have because it's much more than the football game. Uh, it's our, our freedom to to sit here and talk about sports, to talk about football. But more deeply than that, these cadets, these students are soldiers. Many of them will go to, to war. Many of them will never come back. We end our salute to academies, to the salute to those that have not returned with TAPS. The Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family, so the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. I can't believe it. I've been playing 4 on 4 with a barbershop quartet. Nah, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Yeah. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Morning face. You get is when you don't sleep well. This is what happened to Linda. Morning, guys. Good morning. Ah, what is that thing? It's me, Linda. Oh, my God, it talks. Run! No, it's me, Linda, from HR. It looks hungry. Save the children. Save them. Stay back. I've got me. Ow, that went in my eyes. We're moving. It's called beauty sleep for a reason. And there's never been a better time to get some. Get 20% off IKEA salt and mattresses. IKEA, love your home. You know, back then I was a little baby. Sweet and greasy. Gotta love bread. I know. You know, there's sandwich bread over there oh, next yeah. to the coffee. I eat bread in the bathtub. Okay, that's gross to me. There's a lot I've been feeling lately. Uh, why is there a hearse at my house? Night screams. The new fun of the kids. Billy, Billy. My Billy. Billy, where are you, Billy? So I need to talk to you regarding money. I stomped on all the fun chunks. My grief has a scent like suffering. A rusty navel? How'd it get rusty? Look at this bug. 
It's an honor to meet you, my lord. Winkle, winkle, wink, whittle goes. And kiss a pickle as you haunt your tree. Hey! Welcome back to the balance, our annual salute to the service academies. It is Army Navy game. We've been talking about that all day long. Also, thank you to Matthew Hicks, who play, play the Homer card with us and talking about uh, the despicable state that the Indianapolis Colts have found themselves in. But joining us now, Ed Kratz, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles, our official NFL contributor from uh, SI.com and uh, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles. Also, Mo from the BS Sports Show. Mo, how are you, sir? Mo, are you with us? Okay, we'll go with Ed. Ed, are you with us? <laughs> I I am with you. Yeah. How you doing, Tom? I, I I see Mo there. Mo, can you hear us? Well, Mo, just jump in here anytime. I'll shoot you a text. <laughs> but <laughs> so, is that you, uh, Mo? Can you hear us? Yes, I hear you. All right, all right. Happy worried there for a minute. I could see you there. I just thought maybe you had you'd fallen off into the black hole or something. Well, today, guys, is our salute uh, to the academies, our uh, official Army Navy game. Uh, in the last half hour, we uh, did a salute to the academies day one at the West Point, day one at Naval Academy, and day one at the Air Force Academy, and ended this segment with the playing of taps. We'll start with uh, with you, Ed. Obviously, this year's game is right there in your your backyard at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you get a chance to go out there or not, uh, but what are your thoughts about this annual uh, rivalry, one of the oldest and most uh, dearest? It, it doesn't matter if you like football or don't like football. The point is this is a far more than a football game, and it gives an opportunity for us to showcase our military. Yeah, uh, I've been to several Army-Navy games, you know, just because it is right here in Philly. And, that, you know, the best part of – Army Navy isn't the game. It's all the pregame pomp and circumstance sure. that they have. And um, just a terrific spectacle uh, of the military on display. And I, I just love that part of it. And, you know, if you're going to go to the game, you just don't show up for kickoff. You show up hours in advance and you sit there and you watch everything that takes place. Cause it's just a fun thing to see and be a part of. And, uh, you know, for Philadelphia is fortunate to, uh, uh, to have it uh, for so many years, you know, I know it's been the Baltimore on occasion, but, um, you know, really it is, you know, Philadelphia where it got its start and continues to be. And uh, it's very, it's supported very well. You know, there's always a good crowd on hand and a uh, professional football stadium, which is a big deal for these guys. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, game, great tradition. Uh, love it. I won't be able to get there today. There's a lot of rain overnight in the Philadelphia area. Uh, it might even rain during the game. I think it's supposed to clear off, though, and uh, might see some sunshine. But, uh, yeah, the game itself, you know, I think uh, Navy is favored by double digits. But, you know, again, this rivalry being what it is, those those lines don't mean a whole lot. They, uh, you know, they're, both teams want to beat each other very badly uh, for bragging rights. So uh, I expect it to be a close game. But, uh, you know, I think Navy uh, might have a little more firepower uh, this year and, I know Army's won, I think, three in a row in this uh, yeah. series. Um, so, but I think Navy kind of ends that today. Uh, and I'm a Navy guy. You know, I have Navy in my family. I've never right. been in the right. branch of the military, but uh, a lot of family uh, that have served in the Navy. So I guess you could say I'm a Navy guy. Well, I'm a, I'm a split card. Everybody knows I'm Army, but my son is in the Marines, so he's going Navy. Uh, so, yeah, you're right, the, the ceremonial part of it. And, you know, again, not a political show, but like Trump or don't like Trump, he's still the commander in chief. It's the commander in chief's trophy. And one of the traditions is that, you know, he'll start out, well, today it'll be the Navy, but depending on the uh, the home game, he'll start out on the home side. And then in the second half, he'll go across the field with him and the Secret Service agents to the other uh, side of the field. Uh, so a huge uh, opportunity to showcase our military and what it's all about. Mo, what are your thoughts, Army Navy game, sir? 
Well, being Canadian, I normally don't even watch it, but uh, I'll probably check it out. <laughs> no, uh, no, I, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun, pop and circumstance, you know. Like, and like I said, you you go to the game, you get there hours early to uh, to check out all all the goings on, and it's a very emotional game, uh, and it's a fun one to watch uh, every single year. So I'll be tuning in, checking it out today. Well, absolutely, and that's what I was uh, I was talking uh, with Melissa, our social media person, is just that, you know, th- this is a big game, and, uh, you know, a lot of the things that happen, uh, be, 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 be the game is the, the pre-ceremonial game. So let's get into some NFL talk. Uh, we'll start with your Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Ed, last week, good win against the, the, the Giants. I texted you. I said maybe they still have a shot to win the NFC East because, Hey, it's the NFC East, and this year everybody is kind of struggling for their their spot in the cake. But uh, uh, Eli Manning, I saw a lot of Eagle fans uh, uh, were glad to to see uh, Eli Manning uh, uh, as well. But uh, break us through that win. And of course, uh, the Colts have a Monday night game this week against uh, the Saints. Uh, but a good win against the Giants. Close win. Uh, they tried to give it away, but uh, what's going on with the Eagles? Well. You know, the Eagles have a roster that looks like the practice squad from August or, you know, a preseason game from August. They they have four practice squad players that they've called up within the last month to uh, fill in for, uh, you know, some of these hurt guys they have on offense. You know, Alshon Jeffrey just went on injured reserve, joining Deshaun Jackson there. And, of course, they lost two running backs in Sproles and Corey Clement to the injured reserve list this year. So uh, they're going in very young, uh, you know, the cast of characters that, Certainly, they didn't expect to play a role, um, you know, back in August when they cut these guys and then brought them back on the practice squad. And, uh, those guys really showed up against the Giants on Monday night. I'm talking about guys like Boston Scott, who had a very good game, Greg Ward at receiver, uh, and Josh Perkins, who was uh, had a role also. The three of those guys accounted for 199 yards of total offense between running and catching the ball. And uh, that kind of kept the Eagles season alive. I guess it was a big win. It came against the two-win Giants team. There's always crazy things that happen in that Giants-Eagles series. Uh, you know, there have been a couple miracle of the Meadowlands-type plays, and the Eagles in two, two years ago won with a 61-yard field goal uh, by a rookie kicker that kind of propelled them on their Super Bowl run. So uh, these games are always close. The Giants had that big lead at halftime, 17-3. to The Eagles got booed off the field. Uh, half the crowd left at halftime, uh, kind of figuring the season was over. Uh, in the rain, it was a rainy night, uh, but the Eagles somehow found a way to come back and uh, and notch that win. Carson Wentz had two touchdown drives late, you know, with a minute 53. They let them on a six-minute drive, and they scored with a minute 53 to go to tie it, and then they won the toss and won it in overtime. And uh, that was the first time they've ever come back from a two-touchdown deficit at halftime since week one of the 2014 season. Um, so you got to give them credit in that regard. Even though the Giants, it was their ninth straight loss, it was still a big win, kept their season alive, and now they go to Washington, a uh, three-win team, uh, but playing better. They've won two out of their last three. They played the Packers fairly tough last week, and, you know, the Eagles beat the Redskins in the week one season opener, but they needed two touchdowns from Deshaun Jackson and two from Alshon Jeffrey to do it. Uh, they were down 17 to nothing in that game, but they came back, and now Jeffrey and – Jackson aren't there and they're in Washington, which will probably be an Eagles home game because nobody goes to the games in Washington anymore to root for the Redskins. Uh, that's pretty <laughs> sad. I mean, it, <laughs> tickets, proud $4. come on here. Free tickets. What? <laughs> yeah, that's come it. On. That's it. It's, it's going to be an all Eagles crowd. You know, it's two hours down the road, two and a half hours down the road. And uh, you're going to see a lot more Eagle fans than Redskins fans, but still, it's going to be a tough game for the Eagles, especially as undermanned as they are. Um, you know, and it's kind of a must-win deal. Now, it's weird because if the Eagles win tomorrow uh, and the Cowboys lose, the Eagles could wrap up the NFC East by beating the Cowboys in Philadelphia next week, uh, and they could rest everybody for the final game against the Giants, and they would have eight wins and be the division champ, which is kind of a joke, but that's just the way the NFL is. And, you know, you win your division, you, you, you get a home game in the playoffs, and that's the way it's always been. There have been teams with losing records that have done that. Uh, and the Eagles might be the next one, or even the Cowboys. You know, the Cowboys play the Rams. That's going to be a tough game. Um, but the Rams, are they have eight wins. They may end up with nine or ten wins, and they won't get in the playoffs, the, the Rams. So, uh, it's just the way the NFL set up, though. 
Yeah, and I think we're going to be seeing the end of a, of a Jason Garrett. Uh, so we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, Mo, your uh, Cleveland Browns are out in the desert against the Arizona Cardinals. What say you? Well, 